Hey everyone, Simon here from Top Tennis Training and in this video we're going to take a look at one of my students, his name is Johan. Some of you may know him from the Tennis Dream channel. We're going to take a look at his transformation over the past two and a half years working with me. So firstly let's take a look at when he started working with me back in October of 2015. Let's take a look at his game back then and let's see some of the flaws in his technique. There you could see that his forehand had some real major issues with the, the preparation, his wrist was really floppy and he just didn't use his body weight enough on that forehand. It was almost like he was just pushing it in. Now it had really good extension through the contact point and the follow through was fine, but the setup, the power position, I had to really go deep and, and really had to change all of that. And to really try to use his body weight and the forward momentum of going from the back leg to the front leg to generate that body weight in the shot. Now Johan he used to play a lot with the open stands when he did step in with the neutral stands he would still fall back off the shot and it's a habit that even now after two, two years plus of working on it whenever we neglect it for a while when he goes off to tournaments when he goes and plays uh, abroad and he comes back, I notice straight away that one of the first things that happens is he stops going through the shot and his left shoulder actually falls off the contact point. Whereas you want to feel that you're going with that left shoulder, staying almost stationary, and the right one is coming forward when you do actually go forward with that neutral or semi-open stance. So one of the major flaws was that forehand. Another part of his game that I really wanted to work on was the serve. Now he used the pinpoint stance when I started working with him. And actually for about a year plus, I kept it in that platform, uh, in that pinpoint stance, where you drag the back foot back uh, together, and then you drive from that kind of pinpoint stance. Now the issue he had with that pinpoint stance was that he wasn't using this back leg, the right leg, enough to generate that leg drive from both legs equally as well. So one of the major things that I would make him do time and time again in our sessions was serving from that right leg. Now the funny thing was when he served from the feet to get a position, his serve was really quite explosive and quite a good uh, motion. But as soon as he started doing the pinpoint from going forward, back, and then coming together, something would happen where the foot positioning wasn't correct. Now eventually, after about 12 or 14 months of working together, he decided that he wanted to try the, the platform stance. And I was open to that, so we actually started working on him using that platform stance. And this is why you can see a big difference on the serve. He's a lot more balanced, and his right leg is using, uh, he's using that right leg to really drive up into the contact point. So those were two of the major things that I, my goal when we started working together with Yoen was to really change his forehand technically, to really polish it and make it a real weapon. Now, it isn't a massive weapon just yet, but he's got the foundation to hopefully build on it from here. The other thing was that serve. 
Now, I really wanted to make that serve a reliable uh, weapon that he could use in matches, and now it's starting to transform into that. Now, the other major part of his game that I wanted to improve was his net game, his coming forward. He was reluctant to come in. He was, uh, he was a bit passive in points when I started with him. I wanted to make him a little bit more like a Djokovic or a little bit more like a Federer who when they see the short ball they come on. So Djokovic he doesn't come to net that much but he does take the ball on the rise and he takes time away from the opponent and I saw that uh, uh, Johan he had a build similar to Djokovic and he also had a very good hand-eye coordination to take it on the rise so there was no reason for him to be standing six or eight feet behind the baseline grinding it out. My idea my vision was for Johan to stay close to the baseline when he is in a neutral or attacking position, move up into the court and really dictate play. And now we're starting to see that uh, the work that we've done paying off. Now his progress over the past two plus years has been really a, a, quite a steady improvement. Every kind of three or four weeks we discuss his progress, we discuss what does he want to work on in the next month, the next six weeks, and we take it from there. Some of the times we've had issues where I've been away with the website, he's been away playing tournaments, so we haven't actually had two years of proper just intense trading. There's been blocks where we've done three or four good weeks, and then for three or four weeks we don't train together and then we catch up again and it's just getting back in that routine. But the good news is that all throughout, whenever he's playing a tournament or whatever, we we'll always stay in touch and I'll make sure that I see a video of him playing to see, okay, I'm seeing that your footwork's a bit lazy in that training session. Come on, you have to be a bit more intense and so on. Or he's having an issue with his serve and he's in Turkey. He'll send me a, a video of him serving I'll have a look at it and I'll say, okay, your elbow's too low or you're not getting the leg drive, etc. So now let's take a look at the transformation that Johan's had over these two years. Uh, let's take a month by month look at his progress. You can see some of the drills that we're doing. Hands up when you're in the ready position. If you're in the net. Pass. Low one. Good. Low one. Last two. Last one. Good. Push. Back, push. Back, push. 
push now, push, push, push. Yes. One more. Okay. Now when we started working together one of the major things was what was Johan's goals and we spoke with his dad, I spoke to Johan as well in depth about his goals and he said he wanted to be a player, a pro player. Now I looked at it and I said he's 15 years old, in the big scheme of things 15 year old players at the top end of uh, the juniors they're already competing on the future circuit by 15-16 and you've even got guys who are winning challenges at 16 the Canadian young guy Felix. Now, I looked at it and said, Yoan started very late. Yoan started when he was eight years old. So he's missed out on four or five fundamental years of that tennis foundation, the ABCs. And I thought about, is it possible for him to still be a professional player even though at 15 he's way behind the top guys at that age bracket? And I thought, the average age of the top 100 player is now 26 or 27. So it is getting older, However, to go from being in high school, which we have in, in the UK, he wanted to go to college, and then he wanted to go straight into playing um, pro events. And my idea was slightly different. I was thinking, okay, at 16 you finish school, you go to your college, you do two years of your A-levels here in the UK, and then at 18, the best option for me was him to go to the US hopefully on a scholarship and play college tennis in the United States. Now, that's four years of pretty good high level tennis. And in the meantime, you're becoming a better athlete. Plus you're getting a degree when you finish that whole process. So the pressure on you when you finish isn't that intense. Whereas if you leave school, you leave college. When I left school at 16, I started training straight away full time. And that was a big mistake because financially I didn't have the funds to actually play enough events to progress properly but also the big thing was you're still a boy and you haven't really turned into a man until you're probably in your mid-twenties so those years that becomes um, there's a lot of pressure on you and I know for myself when I was playing when I was competing because I didn't have a lot of money because I was coming from a background that wasn't that wealthy I really struggled and I, I used to stay in uh, hostels I used to stay in places that weren't very nice to be sleeping in. I used to eat the cheapest food that I could find. 
I used to go on buses to the tournaments instead of taking flights and stuff. So, and the pressure I felt on the court when I was playing the match was intense because I knew if I didn't win this match, maybe I don't have any money for the next week. So I have to withdraw from the next week's tournament. So the pressure was intense and I actually started not enjoying the competition. And I, I didn't want to put Johan in a similar position. I want him to play those events when he's 21, 22 and even older, but have that pressure of, okay, even if I, or not have that pressure, I should say. He's not having that pressure that I have to make it, I have to win this tournament to, to be able to afford to go to the next week's tournament. I want him to feel like, okay, I've got a degree, I've finished my school, now I can give tennis my all for three or four years if I want to, and I can really see where it takes me. And who knows, by the time he's 25, 26, he, he, if he keeps working as hard as he's doing right now, he could be a long way into the, the world rankings if he does the right things, of course. If he started playing tournaments at 18, I don't see that happening. By 21, he's probably burned out mentally, he's probably given up, and the funds on the parents would be intense. So it's better for him to go to college, play four years of college tennis, and after that, if he still wants to try, then go and do it. Two, next one. Three, yes. Four. The major thing that we've always focused on has been playing points, playing, putting all the training. If we're changing a stroke, when we were changing his forehand, for instance, we worked for about six weeks just on the power position. So him getting into that power position, and then I was drop feeding the ball or I was feeding it from the other side of the court. And then we started putting into a rally, into a rally situation where he has to try to find that power position. And slowly we built that up to the point where that was a habit. He was getting into that power position on his own, and then we could put that into points. 
my fundamental belief is that tennis, whatever you're doing in your technique, it should relate to you playing better in point. So if your back end is breaking down under pressure in the pressure of a match, you have to fix it so that it will withstand the pressure of a match, but also deliver good results in that match. Some players, they just hit endless hours down the middle. They hit endless hours cross court, but there's no actual uh, reason why they're doing that. There's no purpose behind that trading. And one of the things that I always like to do with Johan and many of my other students is, we have a goal, we're working on your slice backhand, but how are we gonna use it in the points? Because that's the key. So in every training session, we always finish the last 30 minutes at least with points. And that's something that you see a lot on the, on the YouTube videos. You can see me and Johan playing points at different stages of the past two years, and you can see the development that he's had, and it's been a steady progress, but I've also reinforced the fact that he should be going to tournaments, even if he is losing. He should be going to ITFs just for that experience. He should be going to the tournaments that he thinks, okay, I won't do that well in. Go and test yourself. Go and see what you need to work on. Don't shy away from competition but look for competition. Go to the tournaments and test yourself, and if you lose, that's fine. But go lose and see what you're doing wrong. Come back and say, coach, I need to work on my serve, I need to work on my forehand, I need to work on finishing the ball at the net, etc." So that has been the plan, and so far it's done really well. And now the good news is that we're three or four months away from Yo, and hopefully going, he has a scholarship, he's going to US college, to play college tennis for four years hopefully and after that we'll see what the future holds thanks for watching the video guys i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope you've learned something about what you can do if you really focus in on the craft at hand if you like it give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below as well tell you and well done for all the hard work he's put in and also good luck for his college all the best guys signing off simon from ttt